friends um so i hello do you come up yes you do <laughs> yeah oh hello am i gonna get a kiss okay okay you sit there <laughs> okay i was saying something um yes bookcases I have a large bookcase storage unit. It's not all books. Uh, but I've always thought that one of the best ways to get to know someone or yeah. find out about them is to look through their bookcases and what do they, what books do they have? What do they keep? What else do they keep on the bookcases? Yeah. Are there any books? Yeah. If you go to someone's house and there are no books, it's a little scary. So I've been thinking about decluttering <laughs> and today I'm going to actually act on the decluttering and I've decided I'm going to go through this big IKEA unit behind me. It's, I think it's five by five. Yeah, so it's five squares by five squares. It's one of those IKEA things that so many people have and you see in, you see in stores as actual like retail shelving and it's really handy. I have another bookcase just to the left you can just sort of see some bookcases and dvds there i'm not necessarily going to go through those right now um because again i moved when i moved uh two and a half years ago i really went through everything because i didn't want to move unnecessary things all the way across the country and so i feel like i've I've already done I've already done a lot of decluttering. Like I've gotten rid of the easy stuff. And now I want to go through this guy and all the little tchotchkes on it and the books. I don't think any of the books are gonna go. Spoiler. These are my favorite books because they're in the sort of display y <laughs> shelf and not just the bookcase shelf. Are you gonna help? Are you so helpful? You're so helpful. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stand up anytime soon because he feels, he seems pretty comfy. <laughs> so I want to give you guys basically a little tour of the shelving unit because I feel like it's got a lot of really important things to me on it. It is sort of the focal point of the room. I purposely put the TV off to the side, didn't get a big TV, got a smaller one. Um, even though I watch a lot of Netflix. <laughs> I didn't want the TV to be the focus of the room. I wanted this to be the focus. And I wanted it to be like a, some books, some tchotchkes, some fabric, some little bit of everything. And of course, across the bottom, I've got these, I've got baskets. That was partly to have some hidden storage. So things that didn't look so nice or things that could just get stuffed into those baskets and partly so the front the bottom row would be less accessible to a little monsters you little monster yes you're a little monster yeah but oh and update about the crazy weather the crazy cold weather that uh, we chatted about last week it warmed up it got cold again it snowed, it's rained. We woke up this morning and there was snow on the ground. There was a good, I don't know, a good few inches. It was, well, it was up to a pug's belly. <laughs> and we've been, he hasn't been quite as wrapped up as he was the day I filmed uh, last week. He hasn't needed both sweaters, but he's been going out in one sweater. Uh, he's been wearing his little boots, uh, the ones I showed in the video, the ones that are warmer. Um, we know that was an adventure. He goes with a dog walker when I'm at work. A dog walker comes on weekdays and takes him for an hour or so. And the coldest day, they just didn't go. Um, I canceled that walk. Um, it was just too cold <laughs> for him and for the people, <laughs> for the humans. And then the next day, it was cool, but not awful. And so the dog walker took him for his walk and he was wearing his little boots and then I got home and I'm like there's three boots my dog has four feet where's boot number four 
and it got lost. <laughs> yes, it did, didn't it? Somewhere in the adventure of the dog park or wherever they were, the, thir the fourth boot got lost. But the dog walker was really great, bought me another set. So now I have seven little boots, <laughs> which is really good because I've almost lost one of those boots a number of times. I've, I've been out, I've been the crazy lady poking the slushy snow in the gutter on a really busy road looking for the last boot. And I did find it, but I know. Snorkel, snorkel. But yeah, so we still have all our boots. Uh, we've got more than enough boots now, which is really good. I think, like, shouldn't dog boots, dog boots should be sold in sets of five. Like, just one spare. Either that, or I guess you have to make friends with someone who has a dog of the same size, and then you each buy, you each buy your own set of boots, and then you split a third set, and then so each of you get two boots from the third set, and then each of you has six. This is not a comfy place to sleep, buddy. <laughs> but okay, so let's uh, start the before tour of the uh, shelving unit. I'll spare you me deliberating over what to keep or not, but I will show you afterwards the pile, hopefully it's a pile, of stuff that I will be clearing out. You ready to clean, bud? You gonna help? There's a box of your toys in there. I know, that one's toys. Yes, it is. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we are. This is my living room. Got this big shelf unit. All the little boxes down there. We got a little dog. Yes, hello. Uh, so yeah, so that's where most of my books are. It's on that bookshelf. And then the DVDs are behind the mannequin. And then here I've got Basically, this is my, where my favorite books go. <laughs> so I guess we'll start up here. These are some of my textile books. I've got some great ones about sewing, uh, different couture techniques. I just like reading about them. This book is really cool. I worked in a bookstore for a while. We had this. I never bought it. I eventually bought it myself. Um, years and years later, online. Uh, eventually I'll make some crazy paper piece fantasy quilt. One day. And so I do have a whole other shelf unit where I store all my yarn and most of my fabric, but it got kind of full. <laughs> so I've pulled out the prettiest fabrics and <laughs> used them as decor. These four pieces are all Liberty um, I think these are all, these are all ones my mum bought me on her trips to, yeah, these are all ones mum bought for me on uh, her trips to England. Um, I've since bought myself some, <laughs> some more, which is stuffed into the other cabinet. And then this is just a little uh, collection of fat quarters by Rowan in different sort of linen-y solids. Could be a quilt, could be, I don't know, pockets under collars or something if I ever sew anything again, which I really hope I do. And then next down is more textile-y stuff. I've got these reprints of Weldon's Practical Knitter. I found uh, the full set at a used bookstore in Calgary before I moved, although somehow I didn't buy book one, so I have volumes two through six. Uh, but they're hilarious. They're uh, reprinted old copies of knitting magazines from sort of the late 1800s and they can be pretty hilarious. And then I've got some other sort of old knitting patterns, some books on textile conservation, which again I love reading about, would love to do, and other things like that. This one is my sewing machine in a cover I sewed for it that is a little baggy, but it works. It's out of fabric sewing themed, crafting themed fabric. 
yarn or thread. There's a little goat who sews. And then the first of five cubbies of my special books. <laughs> These are all my Pratchett's. I love Terry Pratchett. I love his Discworld series. I've got I've got all of them up until Unseen Academicals. And then the next oh there's the one about oh well, that is the one about football. There's been a couple since then that I've uh, bought as ebooks. Um, partly because I'm running out of space, partly because the covers were never the same after Paul Kidby. I think Paul Kidby died. And so the covers went from looking like this to looking like this, which I mean is fine, but I love this sort of cartoon style. Okay, and then this box is actually a surprise because it's not a box because there's some things in there that are too big for the box, but they fit. I just didn't put the back part on. What's this? Oh, yeah, these are the only board games I own. Lord of the Rings Monopoly and Lord of the Rings Trivial Pursuit. I think this can go. This is all my CDs. They're all on my computer now. I haven't thought about that CD binder in years. Oh, hey. You helping? You helping? Yes, you helping. Hello. Yes. Yes. Okay. Column two. This box is all cross stitch. This bag. <laughs> this bag is a finished cross stitch that needs to be sewn into a cushion and has been like that for a couple years. This, I think, is my current cross stitch project. Oh, and the snowplow. Mine, but there's a needle. But yes, this is my Christmas cross stitch, which has been undone again for many years. The fabric is sparkly. It's the 12 days of Christmas, and I'm up to six geese laying. And some yellow sprinkly bits in whatever seven is. Seven, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I should, I should get on that. Will this year be the year that I actually do the thing? I don't know. Then, my Tolkien shelf. So this square unit is not actually the best for books, unless you have really tall books, which you do. But as you can see with the Pratchett one, to fit all the Pratchetts in there, I had to go sideways, I had to go up and down. Uh, in the Tolkien shelf, I have two rows of Tolkien books. Um, he's my favorite. I love Hobbits. I love The Lord of the Rings. You probably know this about me, but I'm a huge nerd, especially for Lord of the Rings. That book is the catalog from a exhibition I went to this summer in Oxford. They, that's where Tolkien's archives are, and they had, they had things he had written, maps he had drawn. Um, it was amazing. I cried. <laughs> I was going to say I'm not ashamed to admit it. I guess I'm a little ashamed to admit it, but I still admit it. I cried. I cried tears just from looking at drawings that a man had drawn years and years and years before. It was, it was kind of beautiful. And actually one of my favorite, I'll zoom out to both cubbies, one of my favorite things, um, they had a wall of fan letters from people, and one of them was from a 17-year-old Terence Pratchett. <laughs> to J.R. Tolkien. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, none of these books are going. Ever. This book. This is what I would rescue. I mean, provided I was safe and Conan was safe already. And maybe my laptop. <laughs> this book is what I would rescue from a fire. Uh, this was my dad's copy of The Hobbit. It's the copy he read to me as a child. It was the first like chapter book that I read. And it just... It's lovely. It has a smell that smells so good. It has some stains. One of the pages comes out. I love it. This cubby is crafting stuff. Um, 
It's a few of my taller crafting books that don't fit on my other shelf unit, and a few of the more sort of random ones, the non-knitting related things, all the knitting stuff and spinning stuff is together. And some of this is um, sentimental stuff, like these origami books. I did a lot of origami as a kid. And the paper quilling with some, or paper cutting was something I did for a while. And the bead books are from one of my aunts who does crazy beading and embroidery and stuff. Uh, these two guys are knitting magazines. I think this one's Interweave Knits and this one's Vogue. I haven't bought any of those magazines in a long time. I haven't looked at these magazines in a long time. They just sit here. So I had a career in the theater um, before this. And so these are some of my textbooks from school. A couple plays, handbooks and stuff. This is art. I've just sort of put here, trying to, trying to combine art in the books. And I mean, so far the cubbies we've looked at have just purely been storage. Um, yeah, I like the little art pieces. My ex and I picked them out together though, so we'll see if they pass. We'll see if they pass the sparking joy test afterwards. Uh, this cubby, now we're back at the, the top, is sewing tools, uh, Jenny the Potter yarn bowl with all my tape measures in it, pin cushion, that thing holds all my um, circular knitting needles, and I've got a little jar of stitch markers and doodads and things. I like the idea of having that stuff out and in decorative things, like the little egg basket and this little nice bowl. Um, and I like this for when I'm actually sewing. It's just sort of a plastic container with a bunch of cubbies. But it's not pretty, and I think it'd be nice to have pretty things out but still useful. So we'll see. And then in the center, it gets a bit more decorative. Cute old vintage fan. Um, I'd be scared to turn it on. Scared to plug it in ever. <laughs> but it's pretty. And I like this little basket. I got that at a secondhand store somewhere. It looks like it should have like a dancing snake pop out of it, which is kind of terrifying. Um, but yeah, that's purely decor. This is decor. Uh, it's a beautiful um, vase that my mum bought me. Uh, this little dragon guy I've had for a long time. I bought him at a craft fair. Uh, I don't know, I think I was nine or ten. He's in, technically he's an incense burner, but he's a little dragon reading a book. Pretty darn cute. Uh, this is a travel themed shelf. Um, my mum and I went on a trip to Myanmar in 2013. Uh, it was an amazing trip. Um, it was just, it was beautiful. It was amazing. I learned so much. I, it was just such a wonderful experience. And these are a lot of the books that I bought about some before going, uh, some while I was there, some afterwards. And then this is a little lacquerware bowl that I bought while I was there. And then uh, these guys are meant to be sort of lucky owls. I think they're actually meant to be lucky for couples <laughs> or something because it's they're meant to be a man owl and a woman owl and I don't know bring you a good marriage or something which didn't quite work out and actually this guy's all chipped because he got knocked off a shelf not by me <laughs> uh, but they're really pretty I like owls anyway I actually really like the gold set next more books this is my Arthurian legend shelf. So we've got Jack White, which is which is an Arthurian series. It does deal with Arthur and Merlin and all that. I think Arthur is born. Arthur's not even born to like this one, I think, the fourth one. So it goes for the long haul, and I love that. I love the sprawling, super long series. I actually first read this series. Um, I basically sort of alternated books of this series with books of this series, which is about um, Boudicca. So this, and it was really interesting to alternate the two series like that, because this one, this series by Manda Scott, uh, is about the Romans coming to Britain and 
defeating the tribes that were there. And then this series starts as the Romans are leaving Britain. Um, so it was a really interesting experience to uh, read those two sort of concurrently. And then of course there's the Mists of Avalon, Marion Zimmer Bradley. I just thought it was a good little themed shelf. And here we have, I don't know what we have. Oh. So I showed you my partially finished cross stitch projects. This is my partially finished quilt project. Yep. I have half a quilt sitting in here. Is this year the year I finish the quilt? Maybe. I'm not sure if I'll finish the quilt and the cross stitches and do all the knitting I want to do. So who knows? Oh yes, you see what's coming next. But first, this is doggy toys and doggy clothes. Other doggy clothes. Two small doggy clothes. Yeah. Toys. I think we can edit some of those. But don't tell Fuzzy Wuzzy. So here's my Harry Potter shelf. Gotta have one of those. Um, that's the script of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. When it first came out, I didn't want to read it because it felt like, honestly, it felt like work it was a script <laughs> and although I read scripts for work the type of fiction I like is like really long lush series as you can maybe tell and scripts are just so fast and they go so quick because it's just dialogue 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 stage direction dialogue and I also kind of wanted to leave myself the surprise of seeing the show which I did this summer it was amazing it was worth every pound that I paid for that ticket and I paid a lot of pounds for that ticket and it was not even a full view seat. <laughs> it was on the side. I had a crick in my neck after, what was that, six hours of that? But it was so good. So these are the Harry Potter books, the original set. Uh, I think my mom gave me these three together and then all the fat ones I lined up outside bookstores uh, as they were released. Uh, these guys, moving everything around. So I'm a Ravenslaw, so I've also started collecting the uh, house edition, Ravenslaw house edition of these books. I bought this one this summer at the Harry Potter store at King's Cross Station. This one I bought on Amazon. It is also Ravenslaw. So eventually I'm gonna have to do something about this because <laughs> I'm gonna end up with two sets. But, oh well. And then in the back, there's some Jasper Ford, which is a good English series. It's sort of weird fantasy, literary. You can jump into books and the characters jump out, um, which I need to read again. I've only read the ones. This cubby, this cubby, is, this basket is unfinished knitting and sewing projects and needs its own whole episode and to be dealt with somehow. And these are quilt clips that should probably go in the basket with the quilt. We've got some doodads, got a set of tarot cards. This is not a book, although it looks like a book. It's a journal. Um, I've got the thingamajig for the front of my camera. Green man. Stickers from Antsy Shop. Let's say thank you. Again, I like having useful stuff out here, not just decorative stuff, but like a nice decorative jar with useful stuff in it. Uh, books, and look, another half finished knitting project. <laughs> These are me wanting to learn French. Um, yeah, that's not going so well. Sacre bleu. Um, so I've got a French copy of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or Harry Potter à l'école des sorciers, um, because I thought, oh, I'll get a book I know and read it in French, but I needed to start with something much simpler than Harry Potter. These are books for classes I did not take at university that I thought I would just, I got these for free from a book sale or a book giveaway, I guess. 
and I thought I'd read them and I haven't and I think they're gonna go I think they're probably the biggest item that's going so we're back to the top got some stuff up there I bought this basket at Rhinebeck 2017 when I drove there from here I had seen them the first time I went to Rhinebeck in 2013 when I had flown and I just could not fit that in my carry-on bag and I was so happy she was still there I think it's Sylvia's baskets or something and it's a lazy cake you can put your bobbins in the handle and spin from it that's stuff from my Etsy shop this is papery office supplies this is cards Christmas cards birthday cards that's a photo printer that I bought and I don't think I printed one photo I might try and sell that I should probably check that it works uh, this is more stuff from my Etsy shop, so I sell vintage sewing patterns online. The ones in the back with the paper sticking out are ones I've checked uh, to make sure they have all their pieces. The ones in the front are ones I have yet to check. I have about 500 of those in uh, plastic rubbermaid bins around my apartment that I need to, I need to sell. This is Tlasta from classes I did take. Um, still undecided as to whether it's actually useful to keep or not. Some of it I feel no. Some of it I feel I need to keep as evidence of the degree and proof that I have a brain. Because sometimes I feel like I don't have a brain. We'll see. This is my Sherlock Holmes shelf. Yes. Arthur Conan Doyle. Yes, Conan. Oh yes, so this was my dad's copy, which I think I kind of, I guess I essentially stole. Uh, it's all the short stories, that's what I first read. And then this I bought used, it's all the long stories, but the same uh, publisher. So those are the ones Conan Doyle actually wrote. When Conan Doyle wrote this one, that's a separate copy of Hound of the Baskervilles, just because I like, I love these Penguin books, like the old ones with the, just the such simple covers. I love those. My dad collects those. Uh, all the rest of these are Sherlock Holmes stories written by other people. And then behind them I have two different annotated copies of the original stories. And um, what are those? Oh, those are uh, bound versions of the Strand magazine where that originally published Sherlock Holmes. So yeah, I have a lot of those. So essentially I have three copies of the Sherlock Holmes stories, because I've got the, it's just the plain ones, the two different annotated ones. I have three copies of The Hobbit <laughs> back over there. I've got my original one, I've got an annotated one. I also have El Hobbito in Spanish, just because I love that it's called El Hobbito. And yeah, and the last bin, I think it's just pillowcases. Yeah, that, I know that's not your toy bin, is it? Yeah, those are the matching set of um, pillowcases for the cushions for my couch, which I don't use because I have multicolored, different, exciting ones. And that's it. That is my crazy giant shelf. And now I'm going to see what of that I don't want to keep. And I will tell you now. None of these books are going. <laughs> okay, and here is our after. Now, the bottom doesn't look very different. <laughs> uh, some some stuff. Th those boxes are less full, slightly. Um, I did not move any of those books, because those are my babies. Those are the books I love. Uh, next row, biggest change was over here. Um, that was class stuff. I tidied some of it up. I got rid of some extraneous stuff. Um, all the notebooks on the right, those are all empty. Hopefully get used at some point. Sometime, someday. <laughs> uh, then this cubby is much emptier. I had the photo printer there that I didn't use. I had some extra watercolor paper and stuff. Uh, over here, this one's a little emptier. Some books are gone. 
tidied up the cord on the vintage fan so it doesn't look like a mess. I didn't actually tidy up the sewing stuff, but I put it at the back and put the cuter little knitting basket closer to the front. Um, nothing really changed over here. Um, still undecided about these little blocky arty things. <coughs> And I, oh yeah, and a couple things off the top. There's some stuff in that basket that I got rid of. So it's not, it's not a huge difference. But when you actually look at what I'm getting rid of, um, it covers a whole half a table. Here's what is going. We've got our recycling pile. We've got my CD binder, which I just don't need anymore. I'll be fine without that. That's fine. They're all on my computer. I've got the textbooks for the classes I didn't take um, that I'm going to give away. We've got this textbook. So I took a project management class and the textbook was really expensive. So I thought I'd go on Amazon and find it cheap. And I did. And I felt so smart. And then it arrived. And that little note says, this edition is licensed for sale only in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. Circulation of this edition outside of these countries is unauthorized and strictly prohibited. Um, I used it anyway. It was fine. I passed the class. And now I'm getting rid of it. So it's fine. And then we're getting rid of some dog toys. Don't tell the dog. Hey, bud. Don't tell the dog. Uh, this is a big roll of watercolor paper that I bought for a project. Used what I needed. I'm not going to finish using it. I'm not going to finish that up. Uh, empty binder. Photo printer. I need to figure out if this thing works. And if it does, then I can sell it on Kijiji for money, which is nice. Um, I honestly don't think I've ever used it, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I even want to go through that bother. But it would be nice to get some cash for this cleanup. And then random decoration, little housey thing. And then these guys are some old vintage knitting patterns. I honestly can't even remember where they came from, why I have them. But I think those are going to go in my Etsy shop with uh, the vintage sewing patterns. I've already got some knitting patterns in there, so I think I'll add a few more. But yeah, so that is a slightly cleaner, oh, I dusted too. Slightly cleaner, slightly lighter uh, giant bookcase. And this is what is leaving my house this week. But yeah, so thanks for joining me on that exciting <laughs> decluttering uh, adventure. It's, it always just feels so nice. I feel like 10 pounds lighter with all that stuff gone. Um, and the chance to dust under everything, that doesn't happen very often. So that was really good too. And I hope I've inspired someone to go through maybe their shelves and see if there's anything they don't need or something they can sell on Craigslist or something. And we'll see you next week. And bye for now from Conan and I. <laughs>